So do you want to know pretty much a guaranteed way to get to graduation? Then I have three words for you. Productive habitual behaviors. I know, sexy, right? Hey everyone, my name is Jake. I'm a mechanical engineer and I'm here with the first hand knowledge that you need to get any degree you want. And today we're going to go over the six best ways for you to establish a new productive habit. But before we jump into it, if you find this video helpful or entertaining, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, maybe leave a comment with thoughts and questions you might have. That stuff really helps the channel grow. Also, if you're looking to know more about really anything I talk about in any of my videos, or if you're just looking to increase your performance in school, make sure you check out my book. It's called Becoming an Engineer, The Average Person's Guide to Getting Good Grades and Succeeding in Engineering or STEM School. It's available in ebook and paperback right now and audiobook very soon. Thanks for the support. Okay, so you may be wondering why are we talking about habits on a channel about engineering and STEM education? And to that I would say it doesn't really matter what your goal is to earn a degree, to start a business, or to compete in an Ironman. If you're able to break that big goal down, and chop it up into daily productive habits, you will all but guarantee your success. Think if you were able to form the habit of studying and working on homework a little bit every night, or reading your textbook every morning, or meeting up with your professor after lecture with questions you might have. You know, once you establish something as a habit, the amount of energy and willpower it takes to perform that thing, to do that behavior, drastically decreases. That's why you should care about this because by forming and establishing daily productive habits that go toward your schooling, you will all but guarantee your graduation. So with that, let's jump into the six best ways to form a new productive habit. Number one, habit pairing. Think of all the already established habits that you do every day eating breakfast, brushing your teeth, or exercising. So because these habits already have established time slots in your day, every day, a great way to introduce a new habit is to schedule your new habit directly after one of the habits that you already have established, thus pairing them together. So for example, let's say you have the established habit of walking your dog every night at six o'clock and you want to establish a new habit of reading your textbook every night for an hour. You could try scheduling your reading time directly after, right when you get home from walking your dog, pairing those two habits together. So by arriving home from walking your dog, it will serve as your mental cue to start reading. Uh, I love this technique because it really cuts down on the willpower needed to establish a new habit. You know, it almost feels like you're not even creating a new habit. It just feels like you're expanding one that you already have established, which really helps in the amount of energy needed to establish a new habit. So I've had a ton of success by using this technique, so I really recommend it. Number two, automate your schedule. When you're trying to form a new habit, it's essential to minimize the amount of willpower needed to overcome your own objections. The easier you can make it on yourself, the better. And one great way to do just that is to use your phone's calendar. So once you've established the daily time that you want to spend on your new habit, try setting a meeting in your phone's calendar, a reoccurring meeting, and make sure you set a reminder for that meeting every day. So your phone actually notifies you or pings you when it's time. This is a great way to set a consistent reminder for yourself, which is particularly important on days when you're really struggling. Number three, Create convenience. Humans love convenience. We love things that make our lives easier, right? So it's important to make performing your new habit as convenient as possible. So what this means is eliminating all of your future excuses before they have the opportunity to derail you. For example, let's say you're trying to establish a daily habit of working on your homework. A lot of students like to study at school or at the library, or at a coffee shop. And these places are, are reasonable places to work, but I don't recommend them for your daily homework time because they close, 
they take extra travel time to get there, and they might not always have the space that you need. So why not take the things that you love about these places and implement them at home? That way you won't risk missing a homework session. And I've actually done a longer video on how to create the ideal study space for yourself. I'll link for that in the description. You should think about your future self on days when you're less motivated. You know, what excuses will you be coming up with? Try to eliminate those excuses before they have the opportunity to take hold and derail you, right? So set yourself up for success by making the formation of your new habit as convenient as possible. Number four, visual accountability. When I was in elementary school, I had a really hard time wearing my glasses every day. And in an effort to help with that, my parents created this calendar, right? With a little picture of me with my super awesome glasses in the middle of each day, in the, in the middle of each box. And if I wore my glasses that day, I got to physically cross off each day that I wore my glasses. And if I made it a whole month wearing my glasses, they took me out to dinner and a movie. This technique worked wonders for me because, you know, I really began to enjoy crossing off each day. Uh, it was its own little reward. I still use this technique today for all sorts of things that I'm trying to get done. And you know, it really becomes much more powerful once you really start to get rolling because once you can physically see your progress on a chart or a calendar, it can be really motivating and it can make it that much more painful to miss a day. Number five, tell people. We humans deal with failure much more easily if we're the only ones who know about it. But once other people get involved, it makes the stakes just a little bit higher if we fail or get off track. So try to tell people, make what you're trying to do public, tell your family, tell your friends. Nobody likes disappointing other people. So it will make it that much more crucial to stay on track. So if you live with someone, maybe a roommate or a significant other, tell them about what you're doing. Tell them about the habit that you're trying to establish and ask them if they can maybe help hold you accountable to it. Um, and this is especially effective if they are also trying to do the same thing you're doing. That way you can help keep each other on track. Number six, reward yourself. So as important as it is to stay on track, you know, and set goals and keep, keep track of your progress, it's equally important to reward yourself for your efforts. So maybe at the end of a month where you stayed on track, you implement a reward system for yourself. So Maybe it's just going out to dinner at your favorite place or doing a Saturday night with, out with friends or you know buying yourself a gift. Whatever it is, you want it to be incentivizing for you, right? You know what works for you. You know what you like to do. Um, figure out a good reward for yourself and go get it. But be careful here. You don't want to reward yourself by taking a break from the habit that you're trying to establish. That can lead to you really getting off track and losing a lot of your momentum, right? So a lot of people will do really well with exercising, you know, every day for a month or two, and then they'll reward themselves by going on vacation or, you know, taking a week or two off from their workout schedule. And then that'll totally destroy all the momentum they had and the new habit they're trying to establish. So instead of doing something like that, you want to reward, try to reward yourself with something that reinforces your habit, right? So maybe a new kind of addition to the home office you want to make or a tablet or a new calculator, something that reinforces the habit that you're trying to establish. Speaking of rewards, a good exam score can serve as all the reward you ever need, right? The idea here is to establish a positive feedback loop for yourself. So you put in the work, the work translates into good grades, rinse and repeat. There you have it. Those are the six best ways to form a new productive habit. I hope you found that one helpful. And I'm telling you, you know, by doing this, by implementing uh, new productive habits for yourself, you will be utilizing one of the most powerful things you can uh, to get what you want, right? Like I said, it doesn't matter what it is. You want to graduate, you want to run an Ironman, you want to start a business, whatever. By taking that big goal, and breaking it down and uh, spreading it out over you know daily habitual habits that are geared toward that thing, you will all but guarantee your success. That's it for now. 
So thanks for watching and keep up the good work.